welcome everyone to our flow class for the evening where we will have yoga nidra at the end as well. So let's see, props. If you've got a block or two, you'll definitely need that. And I think we'll be also using some kind of strap or scarf. Um, so have that handy. And then we'll start off finding a comfortable seat. So you can sit in, on the floor in a chair or even take some wall support, sit up against something. And we'll start just to release the shoulders. So inhale through your nose and lift your shoulders up. Take an extra sniff of air at the top. Squeeze your hands in your face and then exhale out your mouth. Just let your shoulders drop. Do that two more times. Just dropping any tension from your day. Squeeze and then let go. Even have a visual. What color is your tension right now? and see it leaving your body on your exhale. And then you can relax your hands onto your lap, close your eyes, and take a moment to notice your breath in and out your nostrils, coming in and out your nostrils. Notice the weight of your body sitting on the floor, the weight of your hands on your legs. And just for a moment, notice your breath just as it is without trying to change it or make it different. And see if you can do the same thing for how you feel. Can you notice how you feel right now without trying to change it? Great. And then we're just going to practice a breath practice called the square. It's called different things, four, four, or the square breath. So we'll... Inhale, hold the breath, exhale, and hold the breath out for about four counts. So we'll try that together. We'll start off with a normal inhale. And a complete full exhale, maybe out your mouth again. And inhale through your nose for two, three, four. And as you hold your breath in for four, squeeze your pelvic floor and lengthen your spine. You might find a little drop in your chin. And then exhale out your nose for four. And gently squeeze your, pel your pelvic floor as you hold the breath out. And you'll relax those muscles when you inhale for four. Squeeze the pelvic floor a little tight. Engagement in the low belly as you hold and sustain. So sustain your breath. And exhale as you release tension. Continue that cycle of four, 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 four. And practice just bringing a sense of calm during the holds without tightening or straining. You can think of this breath practice as a nice toner for your nervous system. You're challenging things a little bit with the holds, but keeping your calm awareness. Good. And it's totally fine to do this with your eyes open just so you know. The next time you get to your exhale, inhale and hold your breath in just a moment. Give that little internal squeeze at your little belly, pelvic floor, and then relax. And just allow your breath to flow naturally, noticing any sensations, any difference in your, in how you feel or your emotions. And then again, come back to that place of trying not to change anything, but just observing. Do that for a moment. Good. Okay. And then you can Give your hands a little rub, make your hands warm, cover your eyes and just feel that warmth go into your eyes. You can massage your face, face a little bit, your ears. We'll just kind of tap the whole body here, maybe your feet and legs. Just wake things up. Notice what might feel like it needs a little um, circulation. Maybe there's some stagnant places. 
And once you feel complete with that, just exhale a swooshing sound out of your mouth. Just kind of clear anything there, clearing your energy a bit from the day, from other people's energy, giving back other people's energy to them and draw yours back to you. You could visualize rose petals and then sit another moment and just notice the effects of that. Ground your energy down and then we'll move um, the spine a little bit so you can bring, oh, somebody got unmuted. <laughs> there we go. So you can bring your right hand, I'll mirror you on this, you can bring your right hand to the right and your left arm up and over. Okay, so from here, bring your arm behind you, bring your palm facing out, and allow your ear or your chin to drop down. And feel a stretch in your neck. You can bring your arm up and over again, slowly rise up and switch sides. So as you're switching sides, your right hand could lift your head up to help you transition. Right arm up and over. And then just adjust, notice if it feels better to have your chin more down or more forwards and then sweep your right arm behind you, your palm faces out and you can drop your chin or your ear. Feel your sitting bones and feet on the floor. And then you might bring your arm up and over again. Slowly transition up, use your hand to help. And we go right to a twist to the right. So you can go right into that twist from your belly a little bit. Maybe move your head side to side. On your next exhale, twist deeper and then unwind as you lift your arms back to the center and twist over to your left. And just take that um, feeling, find that feeling of groundedness, feeling of your feet and sitting bones, bring that engagement to your belly and twist more. And then just to, so you can twist to each side one or two more times and notice what feels better. Maybe you go one breath per twist or maybe you hold the twist again you find what really feels right to you tonight. Whatever time you're practicing this in the future, in the recording. <laughs> and then when you feel complete, you can just sit a moment. So we're just checking in tonight of just being with what is there in the breath, in the body, in the emotional body. And then bring your arms in a big circle and gather your intention. Just gather it to your heart. Is it a word, an image, a feeling? So that this intention can guide you in your practice. So we'll seal in our intention with an OM. Inhale to listen or join in. OM. Good. Inhale. And then we'll transition to our back just for a little bit of deep core work if you happen to have a block you could use it for this part and then you can actually place it between your knees squeeze it and just slowly lower down um, all the way down stretch your arms overhead you can stretch the legs too just find a full body stretch and then you can bend your knees and either keep the block between your knees or scooch it inside your inner thighs Okay, then we'll start with these pelvic tilts. So inhale and your low back lifts and exhale flatten your low back as you squeeze the block. So just do that a couple times. If you want a little bit of a neck stretch, what you could do is have your hands behind your neck, behind your head. And as you flatten your low back, exhale and curl your head up, chin towards your chest. And as you inhale your head down, lift your low back up again. And maybe you go a little side to side to feel the stretch on either side of your neck. Okay. Good. And then the next time your head comes down, we'll circle the pelvis, circle your hips. So just kind of loosening up your low back. You're just making gentle circles with your hips. Laying down, yeah. 
and then you can change your direction. You can relax your arms, just circling your hips like you're drawing a circle with your hips. Like your circle, your hips have paint. You're trying to touch down to create a circle. Good, and then squeeze your block with your inner thighs, flatten your low back and roll your spine up. You can even lift your arms up if you'd like. And then exhale, roll from your shoulders back down to your hips. And then if you'd like to add the neck release, lift only one arm up. I'm lifting up my right arm and I turn to the left. So you look away from your arm and then roll back down at your own pace. You can move slowly, keep that gentle pelvic floor squeeze to work your deep core muscles. Good. And then the next time your hips come up, you can keep your arms by your sides or up and over, but we'll pulse the hips to work the glutes. So you can make these little pulses up and down with your hips as you squeeze the block. And breathe slowly. So your movements are obviously faster than the pace of your breath. And when you feel a lot going on here, really lift up through your tailbone maybe even lift up through your heart and then slowly lower down. Move your block to the side for a moment and let your knees just windshield wiper side to side nice and slowly. And if you wanna add on, you can have um, your arms open to cactus, to open your chest a little bit. And then we'll stay. So bring your knees to one side and just hold the stretch on the, so if your knees are to the left, you're holding the stretch on the right thigh. Sometimes it's helpful to grab your foot just to keep it in place. Or if you want a little more, place your left ankle on your right knee and tuck under your tailbone to feel that stretch. Good. Take a big inhale through your nose, maybe an exhale out your mouth. Unhook your ankle if you had it. Switch sides with your knees. Tuck under, maybe bring your right ankle on your left knee. Just a chance to open the quads. Next breath, inhale nose, maybe exhale mouth. Let go of the tension you're holding in this part of your body and then unhook your ankle if it was hooked. Come back to the center and then give your knees a great big loving hug. Hug them in for full wind pose. Move your knees side to side. Great, and then uh, we'll bring in the knees right over the hips. So you wanna just double check with your fingers that your low back is flat and you'll just check with your fingers that your low belly is engaged. Okay, once you have that, so at first you might just keep your fingers on the low belly and then exhale, lower your foot down one foot at a time and inhale up. You can touch your heel or your toes and imagine that you're still squeezing your block. So we're really working the low belly. Uh, before I learned some of these exercises, I just thought, you know, we have this whole core muscles and I didn't really know the different ones. And now I'm realizing the low belly is actually connected to this little um, sphere, not sphere, um, it's like a sheath that goes all the way around like a corset. And that is what turns on when we engage the low belly and when we engage the pelvic floor. And it's really supportive for um, our low backs. Okay, and then from here we're going to add on. So you're going to add your head to this, hands behind your head. Feel free to stay with that if it feels good. Otherwise, lift your head up, try to get your shoulders off the floor. And as you turn to the right, tap your left foot down. Same thing, but we're adding that turn of our torsos. Exhale, left, right toes go down. And just go nice and slowly. If you wanted to have a little bit more, instead of tapping your foot down, you can extend your leg up towards the sky like a diagonal line. Your leg will make that shape and just take your time. Moving slowly, trying to still keep the inner thighs like they're squeezing towards each other to help turn on the low belly. One more time on each side, just nice and slow. Good. And then when you've had enough, give your knees a hug. Whew. 
And that's probably enough core work for now. <laughs> we can release that with a bridge. So if you'd like, you can lift your hips, roll your shoulders under, or give yourself a nice little break by putting your block at the low, medium, or highest height and just feel that sense of support for a moment with your pelvis elevated. Slow deep breaths. And if you haven't already started our Ujjayi ocean sounding breaths, you can always practice by going out your mouth and then try to keep that as you breathe in and out your nose. And that helps keep us grounded and focused. And then if you still have the block there, remove it, slowly lower. And then we'll finish the sequence with some twists. So we'll start with abdominal working twists. So your knees over the hips like we've been doing. You could try the block between the knees for this optionally and then your arms are at a T. We'll go about halfway to each side just with the breath. So you just go as far as you can go, maintaining strength and stability. You, if you have one shoulder like totally lifting up, okay, maybe you went too far. <laughs> so take your time, feel rooted through the shoulders. This actually feels kind of good in the shoulders too and good in the low back. So just experiment. Maybe you go halfway, maybe you go almost to the floor, all the way to the floor. Just keep your low belly engaged. And then at some point, you can play with straightening one or both legs. Usually I like to start with the bottom leg because it kind of helps you go back up to the middle. And then you can bend your knee and then go to the other side and straighten the bottom leg. Unless you want to try, really root your low back down and maybe once you get to the side, straighten both legs and then bend. And maybe you don't go as far down if you try both legs. We don't want to strain the low back. And one more time on each side. Just take your time. <laughs> I'm finding myself gritting my teeth. So if you do that, okay, maybe you went too far. <laughs> we don't want to overdo it. Then release your block if you have it. Lower your feet down. Move your hips to one side and just take a brief twist all the way to one side. So you can let your knees go all the way to one side and just enjoy a couple deep breaths in this twist. And just taking, a, taking it easy, starting out class can be nice on days when you feel a little more fatigued. We're not jumping right into sun salutes, we're just giving ourselves some time. So switch sides when you're ready, enjoy your twist. Um, and also being with our body close to the ground like this, it's very grounding. You can just feel your body against the floor. It helps to release any um, tension, any anxiety that might be going on in your head. And when you're ready, you can roll to all the way to one side or rock and roll back and forth. Give your back a little massage. You can roll a little to either side of your spine and roll all the way up when you're ready and come onto your hands and knees or you could just give yourself a little rest in child's pose. So either find some movements that feel good in your back, cat cow, or enjoy a nice grounding child's pose. Good. If you are in child's pose, you might find it just really lovely to lift up slightly and lace your right arm underneath you. And then release your head back down. Feel where you can soften and release. And then switch sides if you are lacing one arm through. And take your time to slowly come up to hands and knees if you weren't there already. Maybe flexing your spine back and forth or going side to side a little bit. Do any movements here that feel good. Um, if you feel ready for your first down dog of the day, 
drop your sternum down, let your shoulders go back and push your hands strongly into the floor. So you feel every finger alive and tuck your toes in, lift your pelvis up. If you're not quite ready for down dog, you can stay in child's pose or scoot your hips over your knees. Just start to pedal out your heels. We're giving some love to the calf muscles. Okay, great. And if it feels good, you can walk your feet forwards and then just pause. So you're walking your feet forwards enough that your heels are down. And then you can actually walk your hands close until you're on your fingertips. So it's like a super short down dog. But you can feel a little more in your calves. So notice how that feels. I like to shift my hips back over my ankles and feels really quite intense. And then you can just rest in your forward fold. Maybe move a little side to side there. Notice if it would feel good to bring your thumbs and massage your neck a little bit. Maybe give your ears or your face another little bit of love. And then lift up halfway, hands to the fronts of your thighs, lengthen your spine. And then we'll just come up in a very mindful way. So you firm your belly, squeeze your inner thigh. So we're doing all the same stuff we started with to engage the low belly. And then you just have a mindful walking meditation up to the front of your mat. And we just shake things out a bit. Great. Roll your shoulders. All right, we're gonna come through nice, slow sun salutes now. So we start in that strong foundation. Um, Feel like one hand is on your belly, helping your belly go up, and the other hand's helping your tailbone go down a little bit. Hug the inner thighs. And from mountain pose, just notice. Good. Root down into your feet. Lift your arms. We're going to add a little shoulder release. So you can bend your knees here and bend your elbows. And then exhale, fold down into your forward fold. Breathe in, lengthen halfway. Bring your fingertips down and step your right leg back to a long, low lunge. And just take an extra slow breath or two here. Now, you can actually stay here and keep breathing or flat and then gradually meet us in down dog or gradually step back to plank pose. Feel your strength, push the floor away, get strong in your legs. Maybe lower your knees for the first one to take it gentle as you come down to the floor. And on your exhale, scooch your hips in, have the tops of your feet kind of rooting down, tops of the toes rooting down. Lift a cobra pose. And then push with all your strength, firm your belly, squeeze inner thighs to go back through your plank or half plank to child's pose or down dog. Give yourself a moment. Okay, great. You may decide to have a blanket down for this part because we're going to have a little bit of weight on our knees. So we'll come down to hands and knees and then uh, we'll bring our left knee down and line up your foot, knee, and hand on the left edge of your mat for a modified side plank, I call this pose. So we'll bring a right arm up. And if you'd like, you can just take some time to make a couple circles. Top arm up and over. Pull your hands straight up and open your fingers. As you do this movement, you're staying rooted in your right foot. And you might even, the last couple of breaths, I really enjoy dropping my head and bringing my right hand behind me. Remember how we did that in the side bend earlier? Just getting this nice stretch from right shoulder to right ear. You can turn your chin more down. When you've had enough, unwind your right arm up and over to come back to hands and knees, but with your right leg up now. And then give your knee a big uh, squeeze, like lift, draw your knee to your nose, inhale back, and knee to each arm, just a nice abdominal engagement. And then we'll just have this nice little um, doggy at a fire hydrant pose. Just open up your hip, and then swoop your foot between your hands so we're in that same shape we were earlier but this time we're going to mix it up and come up so we just come up to a nice little gentle crescent lunge lift your shoulders back and down 
and keep pressing your right hand forwards as you tuck your tailbone and then slowly lift your left arm up and then if it feels okay on your shoulder you can bring your hand behind your head just for support and take a few breaths in this shoulder str stretch combined with a little heart opener if that's too much you can have your arm straight up or other option lean to the right side another option for a side bend so experiment there a moment beautiful then when you feel complete we just lower down the hands and this time moving into our hamstring stretch so if you've got your block it can be helpful to put your block inside your foot and just start to shift back and forth either with your back knee down or just lift up your back knee if it's had enough pressure on it for for that lunge and just take your time moving with your breath inhale forward exhale back okay if you're back scoot your back foot so it can come down so we're pausing in the hamstring stretch and really press through your front foot so you start to feel this stretch in the back of your front leg good okay and then if you wanted to add on i usually come high up on my block for this work your upper back so on your inhale you round your upper back and on the exhale reach your heart towards the front of your mat inhale round the upper back exhale reach and only do that if that feels good okay great and then we're going to step forward so bend your back knee get ready to step forwards find length in your spine and forward fold let your head go and we'll just do that same exact pattern one more time so you can just rest in that knowing that you know what's going to happen <laughs> we don't always know what's going to happen in life you can lift your arms out and up and come to standing when you're ready bring your hands through and just notice notice again how you feel in your physical body how you feel in your emotions, in your breath, just check in. And notice, does there need to be any adjustments made to feel better? It can be so powerful to just listen to ourselves and be like, what do you need? Okay, maybe you need to change the movements and do them differently than how I'm explaining, and that is okay. You are your best teacher. Inhale your arms out and up. Bend your knees and bend your elbows. Find that little baby back bend. And then forward, fold on down. Half lift. Left leg goes back to our long, low lunge. Just take a moment here and breathe. And then you might have stayed here longer before or you find your plank. So I, I think of getting the left leg super strong and then step your right leg back and get your right leg just as strong. Push the floor away. Feel your strength. And then maybe lower your knees. Exhale down. And just adding one extra thing on here. Wide cobra. So fingertips go out wider than your mat and feel like your shoulder blades are helping to lift you up. And then lower one ear down and just rest a breath. Just totally rest. And then lift onto your fingertips. Your shoulder blades lift. Shoul your head lifts. And then other ear goes down. And that's quite a deep stretch on the neck. And then hands scooch by your chest. Inhale to lift your shoulders and head. And exhale to lift up through your plank. Child's pose or down dog, a moment rest. So anytime you're feeling just a, in a little bit of disarray or melancholy or emotions, it can be just really great to ask yourself, what do you, how are you doing first and then what do you need? And you might find, I found myself today feeling really emotional and I asked myself, okay, what do you need? Do you need to go outside? Do you need um, 
to meditate, you need to do yoga. And it, the answer came to do yoga. So I did 10 minutes of yoga and I was able to really feel the emotions moving and felt a lot better after that. So listening to ourselves is so important. When you're ready, come to hands and knees. And we're going to bring our weight over to the right knee this time. So I'll switch around for you. And then your left foot will go back. Modified side plank. And then you can start with those circles. Let your arm go up and over. And then pull your left hand up from a fist to open hand. As, and do those movements as you stay gently rooted into your left foot. Okay, great. And then it might feel really lovely if you did this before to lift your arm up and then bring your hand behind your back in that little half bind and perhaps let your right ear drop down, your chin can drop down. And then you might find it feels good to tuck your tailbone. When you feel complete, lift your arm again, bring it up and over and let your left leg lift up and do some knee to nose, knee to each arm, right arm, left arm, if that feels okay for you. Feel free to skip anything that exacerbates anything in your body or if you just don't want to do any more core work. And then you'll bring your leg back behind you, stack your hips, roll open like the little doggy at the fire hydrant. And then front with a firm belly, square off your hips, step your left foot between your hands. Make sure, again, you've got that adequate padding under your knee. Top of your right foot can be down or tucked under. And then take your time to come up. Roll your shoulders. We have our crescent lunge. You can push your hands forwards. And then what do we do here? Right arm can lift. And just mount your shoulder or bring your hand behind to get this little shoulder stretch. Breathe into your right shoulder. You can keep that and go to the side or re-lift your arm and go to the side if that's better for you, if it's maybe too much, having your elbow bent and switch. Great. On your next inhale, come back up. If you're in the side bend, lower your hands, maybe get your black hamstring slide back and forth, working into your hamstrings. And just remember anything you might have done on the other side. Back knee up or down. You can stay into the hamstring stretch if you did before. And if you did the little shoulder work, you could come up to a higher level if you have a block. And then inhale, but round your back. Shoulder blades go far apart. And then exhale, reach your heart forward. Shoulder blades come closer together. And just rinse through your shoulder blades a moment. Okay, good. And then the next time you reach your heart forwards, pause there. Make your legs strong. If you did any variations, do those now. When you feel complete, step forwards. Half lift. Forward fold. Let your head go. And just take three more breaths in this forward bend. Take your time. Feel your toes. Remember how in Down Dog we were really feeling our fingers? So now you're really spreading your toes. You might root the big toes down, but spread all the other ones. That turns on the arches of the feet to help you come up in a really safe way. When you're ready, you can inhale up and sweep your arms out and up. Roll your shoulders. Okay, great. And we're gonna finish our standing postures today with one more little short sequence. So we'll just step out to a wide leg position with the toes out and hands at the heart. You can just feel like you're Free skating side to side. Just do a few on each side. Okay, great. And then as you come up through center, we just take a moment to play perhaps with a neck stretch so you can have your knees bent. This strengthens the legs. Um, if it feels good, 
You could bring your um, left ear to the left and your left arm up and over, and your right arm can come behind. Or maybe you decide you want to work more on the shoulders and you could keep your hands going and maybe they touch or maybe you grab your shirt. And if you, that works, you could forward fold. So just pause a moment to find what feels good in your shoulders or your neck. Good. And whatever you did to one side, do to the other. So maybe it's the next stretch. You could give the legs a break and straighten them if you need to. Or maybe your fingertips go closer together. If you did the forward fold, do that on this side. Good. Beautiful. And then we'll just make a big circle with the arms. You can bend your knees. We're going to do what's called sunflower. So on the exhale, you exhale out the mouth, a ha sound. And just let your arms crisscross. Hold your shoulders. Inhale, lift your arms. Crisscross them. Exhale out the mouth. Two more. At your own pace and your own style. Just let go of the gunk. Again, we're kind of clearing our energy field. And you can even sweep the arms underneath your legs. Phew! It's kind of fun. <laughs> and then when you come up, hands on your hips, hug your elbows, and find your favorite pose here. Maybe it's a forward fold with your hands close to your feet, forwards, or you can find a good, decent twist. So lift one arm at a time if you're twisting. If you know a fancier version, you can do fancier kind of twist. So just any last things that would feel really good for your last standing pose of the day. Okay, great. Okay, good. If you get to a point where you're like, okay, what's next? <laughs> like me, you can have your hands on your thighs and finish with another twist. So um, you're in this horse stance position. You drop one shoulder so you could drop your left shoulder and look right, drop right shoulder and look left. And then you can finish that off with the little free skating we were doing. So you're going side to side, but you add your twist. And get that nice inner thigh stretch. And then we'll just turn all the way to the front of the mat. And whichever leg happens to be in front, we're going to turn it into a pigeon pose. So you could lower the back knee and very carefully place your foot and knee down for pigeon. Unless you're like, oh, I really don't like pigeon. It hurts my knee, whatever. Then you lay down instead and do window stretch with your right ankle on, sorry, left ankle on the right knee or whichever side you're wanting to do. If you're in pigeon, take a moment, get strong through the legs. And then maybe you lower your elbows if you've got your block. Yeah, it's great to get your block. And then maybe you let your block be a pillow and breathe, getting that sense of release. As you have pressure in your forehead that tells your nervous system that it's okay to relax. We hold a lot of tension between the eyebrows. This helps soften that. So in your final five breaths in this pose, stay in this lower to the ground position, or you can come up to straight arms. And imagine you're in cobra. Roll your shoulders back. Um, you can just maybe even get higher on the fingertips. You, this opens the pelvis. And then put your, all of your weight. So we'll all eventually come up at some point, and we'll put all our weight in this front leg, in this front hip. And then we'll bring the um, back leg forwards. I know we're all on like different legs. So um, whatever leg was in back, you're going to bring that foot inside or outside your knee. And whatever knee that's here, for me, it's my right. So I'm going to twist right. If it's your left, you're going to twist left. So we're revisiting our twist. A little bit of a deeper seated twist now. And then if you'd like, you can just add some release to your neck. You can just twist your neck side to side with your breath. Mm. 
If you ever hear me say ah, if you're in a recording, it's because I see a cute dog or a cute cat on the screen. <laughs> I just saw a very cute dog. <laughs> and then twist a little deeper. Counter twist if you'd like to your other side. And then as you come forwards, you get to find one more hip stretch you want to do. It could be just exactly this. You start to let your knee go down and come forwards, or maybe you stack your knees or lean back very carefully and, and uh, line up your shin bones for a double pigeon pose. So this is definitely more intense. The knee stacking is a little bit gentler. And you could stay upright a bit or start to come down into it. And then those of you that were working on the shoulders earlier, if you've got your knees stacked like this, it turns into a really great complete pose when you lift the opposite arm up, whichever's opposite to the knee you had on top, and then you can clasp your fingers behind. And maybe you come forwards, maybe you stay up. So feel free to add that on and breathe. And remember, if you've got your strap, you can use your strap for that pose really nicely for your shoulders. And if you're doing the, the double pigeon one, one thing that you can pay attention to is trying to have your, um, our feet can kind of get wonky and slide. If you're trying to have one ankle on your knee and the other knee over your ankle, you know, in a perfect world. Take an extra breath. And then unwind however you want. You could go through your plank sequence to cobra or just maybe windshield wipe your knee side to side. Maybe you go to down dog, or you can be the lazy transition, relaxed transition, where you just bring your other knee forwards in the pigeon. Take a few deep breaths and then come on down. If you were doing window stretch, go ahead and lay down again if you came up for the extra hip stretch and breathe there. Get your block if you're using a block for a pigeon. Just keep like we were in the beginning of class. See if you can get to that point where you can observe your experience without changing it. And it, it, we're, you know, we're doing yoga postures, so there it's okay to adjust, but see if you can make a change from awareness versus just a reaction. Okay. So if you're like, okay, I kind of need to move, see if you can no really notice that urge to move before you just immediately do it. So you can really appreciate the depth, the ease you're finding. And in the final five breaths, you stay down or maybe you come upright and just focus on this opening in the front of your hip perhaps. Okay, and when you're ready, come upright and lean into the hip of the knee that's in front. Bring your leg that's behind in front. You could sit on a blanket as well. And your foot goes inside or outside your knee. And whatever knee is up, that's the way you're going to turn. So if your left knee is up, you turn left and vice versa. And sit up tall and just maybe move your head side to side first. It looks like Christine's dog is trying to do the twist, too. It's so cute. <laughs> Great. And then twist your other way when you're ready. You still have that deep abdominal engagement there. And then as you're ready, you do your stretch, your extra hip stretch. So the knees stacked. Or if you're working on double pigeon, very important to have your foot flex. So it's um, when we point our foot, that can lead into sickling the ankle. So you want to try to keep your ankles flexed, even if it makes your knee high up. That's fine. You'll gradually work to where you can um, soften a little deeper. And if you did the arms, just have the whatever knees on top to have the opposite arm up. And then you might use your strap on that one. Good. Be 
Beautiful. Go a little deeper on your exhale. On your inhale, come up in any way you want to kind of clear the slate for yourself. All right. And then this is the time of class where you can pick any last thing that you want. So maybe you need um, another kind of twist. I will demonstrate a deep twist in case you're wanting a twist. If you know you want something else, go for it. Just kind of do whatever you want. So a twist that I find is really cool is I have my, sometimes I'll use a block or a pillow. I'll bring my left knee over to the right. And then I'll just scooch so my hips are stacked. And then my bottom foot, I'll grab it. And for me, this is a really nice um, twist with a quadricep stretch and you can push your left foot into your right knee or maybe someday you could take your foot and just rest it out on the block. The other thing you could do here, if, especially if you've got your strap, if you know that sequence where we have um, the strap around the foot, that can be really nice for a hamstring stretch. You could open your leg up to each side for a few breaths. So let's take a couple minutes to do whatever you need here whatever your body's calling for. Come back to that sound in your breath to help your focus for these last few moments. Those who are in the twist, feel how you can maybe go a little deeper as though you are, maybe your extended leg, it's like you're pushing it into a wall. And then switch sides if you haven't already. Whatever pose you're doing or sequence you're doing, just take your time to place your body in a really mindful way. So if you're doing the twist, check that your hips are stacked so you can easily reach your foot if you're feeling okay to grab your right hand or left foot. And then you might rest your right knee on a block or a pillow you could push your foot into your bottom left knee and breathe openness into your low back, maybe the front of your left thigh. And if you want even more straight in your top leg, like you're pushing it into a wall. For many of us, we might have something for you end up in a small space on one side of the twist, usually having something you actually can push into a couch or a wall. A furry friend <laughs> and then you know when you feel complete come back to your back and give your knees a hug and if you want a little bit more it's always nice to really feel the tension so you can totally relax so maybe you lift your head up and squeeze 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 and then open yourself up to your final relaxation I highly recommend putting up pillow or blanket under your knees and maybe putting extra padding under your head so we want to just get so comfy and warm and relaxed for shavasana So just take a moment to get comfortable. And I'm going to just be playing nice little gentle background music while I lead you through a short guided relaxation. Like, take one more big inhale, maybe an extra sniff of air, and 
and as you exhale, totally relax your body, let your body go, let each arm go, each leg go into the floor. our senses as a way of further going inside our bodies. Start by noticing the sounds that you hear. Notice if it feels good to release your bottom jaw away from your head. Maybe you swallow and allow your tongue to settle more fully into your lower jaw. Feel a letting go in your right ear as you receive sounds in your right ear. Feel a letting go in your left ear and receive sounds through your left ear. Through both ears, can you hear the sound of your own breath? to the feeling of touch. What is your body touching? The floor, the clothing on your skin, the cool air or warm air. Can you draw your awareness to the periphery of your body? the edge where your body meets the elements. And pause a moment here as you notice the up and down movement of your breath. Pause at your heart. You might even imagine a moment that your breath were coming in and out of your heart. Plant the seed of your intention here, a word, an image, a feeling. And if you don't know what to connect to here, it might be really lovely to say, I listen to, I listen to and respect my own needs. Listen to and respect my own needs first. I listen to and respect my own needs. Continuing this focus of the senses, draw your awareness back to your face and notice your eyes likely closed, but what is in your visual field? What shades of light, dark, or patterns do you see? Can you relax any effort, release any effort in your eyes? Maybe even feeling as though you're breathing in and out of your eyes. The cooling, gentle sap of your awareness is softening your eyes, allowing them to be heavy. Notice your nostrils, the breath at your nostrils, any smells. Taste. 
through the feeling of your mouth, each part softening, softening held old tension. And then go up slowly to your forehead, the location of your sixth sense, your intuitive Agya Chakra, third eye chakra, the seat of your inner seeing and knowing. And for a moment, feel as though this is your vantage point for viewing your experience, your third eye. And gaze through your body and just feel that you're shining this light on different parts of your body and you're relaxing any parts that are still holding tension. You could go from head to toe, just gently scanning in a way that feels good. This light that you're shining from your third eye is relaxing your body. So that you end up having a sense of relaxation in your whole body, a sense of ease or even floating or heaviness. Tune into this eyebrow center, this middle of your forehead. And allow yourself to receive a message here some words, an image, a little visualization. Just really be receptive to whatever comes. This is your message from your deeper wisdom from within you. And no matter what you receive, send this feeling of thank you to wherever that message came from. And this could be a really sweet time to just say, I'm gonna take longer here. Just keep resting in this soft awareness. Or if you know that you've just set aside the time of this class, you can start to wiggle your fingers and toes, roll your ankles and wrists out stretch in any way that feels good and take your time if you're coming up to find a comfortable seat great if you're in a seat and as we begin with an ohm, sweep your arms out and up. Connect with whatever you receive during that relaxation, if you can remember it. And also think of a person or a part of the planet you'd like to send some light to. Inhale for ohm. bow to the light of your heart and may this light in each of us guide us and remind us that um, it's okay when there, whenever we feel a little off or tired or um, emotional we just tune in ask how your ourselves are doing how are you doing what do you need may we all follow through with doing that ever so often this week namaste Turn off the recording.